The White Lady, a tart refreshing drink that I think might be your next favorite. Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. Now, don't you just hate it when you've got a drink that you really like and you know the recipe for, and then you look it up in some book and they've got a different recipe than what you're used to making it with? Which one's right? Sometimes the recipe just has a slight variation. Sometimes those variations are huge. Today, we're gonna to look at a recipe called the White Lady, which runs into that problem. And what's most interesting about this is that you'll find two, three, maybe even four different recipes for this drink, all being promoted by the guy that we think invented it. Harry McElhoney, we think invented the White Lady, uh, probably in the 1910s, 1920s, sometime in there. Um, the original recipe that he printed for it called for cream de mince, Cointreau, and lemon juice, which I don't know about you, but that doesn't really sound very good to me. He then took and published in the, the ABC of Mixing Cocktails a version of the recipe that called for brandy, Cointreau, and cream de mince, which also doesn't really sound like a great drink. Later on, he published a recipe that called for gin, Cointreau, and lemon juice. Now we're talking. Now we've got a drink that I think has all the components of a great cocktail. I'm going to use a recipe that I found in the Savoy cocktail book that calls, puts those ingredients all together in a well-balanced drink. Let's take a look. It starts off with one and a half ounces of gin. And then we add three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau. and three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Now, I always like to make my lemon juice fresh, and you've seen me a couple times here use various different uh, lemon juicers. Um, a while back, uh, I used a nice little orange lemon, ju uh, lemon juicer that I had picked up that I felt was still being made, and unfortunately, they stopped making it, I guess, like five years ago, so I must have found a, an old stock in some store someplace. Um, and so I've been looking for, especially since that juicer just broke on me a few days ago, I've been looking for a new juicer. Well, come to find out the same company, Amco, who's making those juicers, just came out with a brand new juicer. I got it last night in the mail, so I'm using it now for the very first time. Um, it looks interesting. If you look at it, it looks like a standard Mexican juicer, um, except it's got feet on it, so it sits on the table. It's also got a little pour spout, so you're not taking and squeezing it into the drink, which kind of can be messy. One of the problems I normally have with a Mexican juicer is that it kind of squirts out all over the place. Uh, one of the juicers I like using is the Eboloi juicer. But it's an antique, not being made anymore, and it's kind of on the big side. This one works, uh, I think, will work pretty well because it's nice and small. Let's take a look. Now, the Mexican juicer, you put the lemon upside down because you've got the holes in the bottom squeezing through. Uh, this one doesn't. I'm assuming it could be used either way. Uh, let's go ahead and try using it. Uh, this direction. Uh, on the tabletop, I get a good, good leverage. And we need a three quarters of an ounce. Okay. Now let's t twist the lemon over and see if I get more. One of the things I like by twisting lemon over, I'm going to get more of the oils from the skin coming through, which I personally think uh, would add better flavor to it. Okay, and I got almost three quarters of an ounce. Uh, let's go and I've got some previously squeezed lemon juice here to top it out with. And there we go. So I, I, think, it, I think it worked pretty well. It's nice and small. Um, it's not the sort of thing you do high volume squeezing with. It'd be a cocktail at a time. Uh, so if you're a, a bar and you want to take and squeeze three or four lemons at a time, might not be the right thing, but one cocktail at a time, I think that might work pretty well. Now we're going to shake this up with ice. Now I, I do have some friends of mine who have complained about the white lady recipe that I've listed on drinkboy.com is not having egg white in it. Uh, they say the proper white lady has egg white in it. That's why it's called a white lady. Um, 
unfortunately, Harry McElhoney, who invented the drink, had a couple of variations of the drink which clearly didn't have egg white in it, and so that's really not where the name came from. Um, I think egg white would make an excellent version of this, but I don't think that was the original version. So, Ted, if you're out there listening, the white lady doesn't have to have egg white, but you can add it if you want. Kind of think of this as a gin sidecar at a certain level. Another name that you sometimes see this version of this drink listed for is also a Delilah. So you have two drinks now, the same recipe by different names, which is another interesting problem people run into. So since the drink is going to be cloudy from lemon juice, I shake it rather than stir it. It's got that crisp lemon flavor that's coming off. Uh, I, I believe the oils are adding quite a bit to that as well. Of course, the lemon juice is, is, is bringing that forward. The, the tart tang with the sweetness softening it out and the gin notes, I mean, especially I think Martin Miller is adding some interesting characteristics because they, they've got a, a nice flavor balance to them. Really is making nice bright. If you, if you like the, the daiquiris, the margaritas, and the sidecar, this is another drink I think you should try, the White Lady.